Unfortunately, during COVID-19, there has been an increase in various types of fraud. The one thing that scammers have in common is that they're trying to take things away from you, whether it be information about your personal identity or those of people close to you. Ultimately, they're trying to take your money. The best defense against scams is being aware of the types of tricks and traps that fraudsters use so that you won't fall for them. Subscription traps occur when you're offered a free trial or low-cost trial for some digital service or subscription. The provider requires that you submit your credit card information when you register in order to receive this free trial. For some products like health supplements, you might be asked to pay for the shipping cost. Unknowingly, you've just given permission for a monthly subscription and you will, bill, you will be billed once the trial period expires. In some cases, it's very difficult to cancel your subscription and you might be forced to cancel your own credit card. Some recommendations to avoid subscription traps are keep in mind that if something appears too good to be true, it probably is and don't sign up for such a free trial. Also, before signing up for a free trial, research the site or service, read external reviews about the company, especially paying attention to any negative reviews. Don't sign up for anything if you do not understand the terms and conditions. Also, it's important that you check your credit card statements on a regular basis for any unknown charges and follow through if you don't recognize the charge. And lastly, if you're unable to cancel your subscription, contact your credit card and block further payments from them. Identity theft is a serious crime and in identity theft scammers look for your personal information, especially your credit card information, bank account numbers, your birth date, social insurance number, and any other uh, information from your personal documentation that they can use to create fake identities, things like your passport number. Some tips to keep in mind in order to keep yourself safe from identity theft. Don't provide personal information over the phone, text message, or by email to anyone that you do not know. Also create strong and unique online passwords so people cannot access your accounts. Lastly, only purchase online from reputable companies. Research the companies ahead of time to make sure that they are reputable. Fraudsters frequently contact businesses in business scams. What they're trying to do is fish for information so that they can issue fake invoices to the business. In one form, a scammer will contact one staff member about advertising with the business. Later, the scammer will use information that they had acquired from that person to correspond at, with the bookkeeper, generate a fake invoice for a service, send it to the company, although in reality no service had been provided. Other fraudsters will send fake invoices for office supplies, something that the business might purchase, in hopes that somebody might pay the invoice by mistake. Some strategies to protect your business from business scams. Train staff to be cautious about unsolicited business-related calls or emails. Limit the number of employees who can approve purchases or pay bills. Create procedures to verify that invoices are in fact real and corresponded to a service or that had been provided. Lastly, inspect your invoices very carefully in case a fraudster has copied the invoice from an existing supplier but has changed things so that you pay for a service that had not been actually rendered. Phishing scams unfortunately are all too common. In phishing scams, Unsolicited fraudsters will target ordinary people at their homes. In these scams, the fraudster will send you an email or a text message 
impersonating a trusted company, bank, or government agency, you're asked to click on a link and then provide personal information such as your credit card number, your social insurance number, or your password to log into your bank account or your government account. In order to protect yourself from phishing, know that reputable organizations will not ask for personal information via email or text. Also, ignore any unsolicited communication from unknown contacts and delete suspicious messages. If it's important, they'll contact you again. Independently verify the phone number, email address of any organization that is contacting you so that you don't contact a scammer. You know, read the phone number in the back of your credit card. Don't trust the phone number on the line of the email that you receive. Lastly, do not reply using a suspicious email or phone number that you receive in the message. You can't be sure that this is in fact real. A tax scam is a common form of a phishing scam where you receive fake correspondence by email, text, or phone call in which the person contacting you says they're from the CRA, the Canadian Revenue Agency, and they claim that either you're entitled to a refund or that you owe the CRA money and you need to pay right away. In the scam, the scammer is trying to access your tax information, your banking details, and your personal uh, login for your CRA account. Tips to protect yourself from tax scams. First of all, know that the CRA will never ask for your personal financial information via email. They also will not threaten to send you to the police to have you arrested if you do not pay. The CRA also will not ask for prepaid gift cards or prepaid credit cards. And the CRA does not contact people via text message about their personal accounts. So never use information that you receive from these potentially suspicious emails from the CRA to contact them. Always independently verify the CRA's contact information and ask them directly if there is a problem. Romance scams occur frequently and unfortunately many fraudsters take advantage of others who use online dating services. And there are some fraudulent online dating services as well. In these scams, the fraudster will assume a fake identity and will try to charm others they meet on these sites. Soon after uh, speaking with one another, the fraudster will ask the person to send them money, claiming that they may have a sick relative or that they're in a desperate situation. And if the target decides to send money to the scammer, that person soon will disappear. How do you protect yourself from romantic scams? As a rule of thumb, never send anybody money that you meet on a dating site. Also read the terms, conditions of online dating sites. Read reviews about the site before signing up. And lastly, remember that it is rare that anybody will declare undying love to you shortly after meeting you on an online dating site. And if somebody does that, it should be a warning bell that this person might be a scammer. One of the worst forms of scams that you can encounter is when somebody else assumes the identity of somebody that you know and is dear to you. Emergency scams uh, occur when somebody claims to be somebody you know and will take advantage of your goodwill. In this case, you'll receive perhaps a phone call or a message online and social media claiming to be somebody you know. Perhaps a relative, friend, and you receive a message saying this person is in serious trouble. Perhaps they've been in a car accident or in jail or in a foreign country without money and that they're in desperate need of help. They ask you to send money immediately to help them out. What the scammer is doing is they're both phishing to get information from you, perhaps money from you, and they also want you to real, reveal personal information about others close to you and yourself. 
To protect yourself from these sorts of scams, verify that the stories are true before providing information. Contact the person who's claiming to be in trouble using the contact information you already have rather than trusting this uh, phone number. Never send money to someone you don't know. And don't provide personal information over the phone to someone who's just called you. If you want more information about different types of scams, an excellent resource is the Little Black Book of Scams, which is issued by the Canadian government's Co Competition Bureau.